Hello there guys, Mr. Missing in Action back with another Raid Shadow Legends video for you. Guys, today I've got a, a champion guide on quite possibly my favourite champion in the entire game, um, Rockbreaker. Rockbreaker is a, uh, an epic dwarf, he's a defence based character, uh, spirit affinity, um, and, and this guy is an absolute tank. Um, he, he's definitely underrated in my opinion. Um, but we'll get onto that in a second. Um, we'll take a quick look at his skills, uh, the masteries I've kitted him out in, and his artifacts. Um, we'll talk about where he's, uh, he's best used. We'll have a look at his reviews. Um, I have issues with the reviews, actually. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so before we get into Rock Breaker, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, guys, and turn on the notification bell. Um, Mr. Missing in Action is here to stay, working hard to produce uh, quality content for you guys. So anyway, on to Rock Breaker. Rock Breaker, why is he my favourite dwarf? Well, not just my favourite dwarf, actually my favourite champion in the entire game. <clears throat> because he's an absolute tank. This guy can take a beating, um, and he doesn't go down. Um, let's take a look at the skills first. On the A1, we have Whirling Hammers. Uh, Whirling Hammers is a single attack, um, but each time he uses the skill, it increases his defense by 4%, uh, and that stacks up to 20%, and it stacks across rounds. Um, so basically, you can effectively add another 20% onto his, uh, his base defense, uh, which is pretty high uh, at over 1300 to begin with, um, and, and his defense stacks up as the, the fight goes on. Um, on chest thump, he's a two. Uh, here he places a provoke debuff on all enemies for a turn. Uh, starts off at 75% chance, but you book that up to 100. Uh, and you bring the cooldown from four to three turns. Um, and he also has a really, really nice passive in Iron Hide. Uh, Iron Hide starts off as a 25% chance, but you book it up to 50, and you do want to book this guy to get the most out of him. Uh, he basically has this 50% chance of decreasing the damage inflicted by 50% each time he actually gets attacked. Um, and this genuinely does proc around about 50% of the time. So he literally, you build him with massive defense, basically. Um, and his defense continues to climb. And he's provoking, and he puts counter-attack on himself. Uh, he hits reasonably hard as well. He also comes with a defense aura as well in the arena battles by 30%, which is massive. Um, he's great in a, uh, an arena defense team. Uh, he's also pretty good in the offense team as well. Um, the provoke is a great way of uh, controlling the crowd, effectively. Um, in terms of masteries, um, I've gone down sort of the... Uh, the, the clan boss route, if you like. I am using him in clan boss at the minute while I work on my uh, unkillable team with Painkeeper and Maneater. Um, but I've gone down to Warmaster um, to give a, a, the chance of uh, basically proccing the extra damage. We've gone obviously for uh, increased defense and we've worked our way down the defense tree. We've gone for things like Selfless Defender so that he, uh, he takes uh, some of the damage uh, from the first enemy hit an ally receives. Because um, he's the guy with the, the high defense. Um, so we've got things like Cycle of Revenge as well. Uh, with a 50% chance of increasing the turn meter when an ally is attacked with a critical hit. Basically, we want this guy going as often as possible. Now, if we take a look at his artifacts. Um, I've got him in a defense set, an accuracy set, and one of the new uh, perception sets. Um, accuracy is important for the provoke uh, to be able to land that. Uh, even though it is a place. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, accessories, we've got uh, HP on the ring with some defense and some extra HP. He's all about making him tanky. I've gone for crit damage on the amulet, so he hits a bit harder when he does uh, counter attack. Um, the other stats, uh, they're a pretty flat stat. I'll probably find some better in the future. On the banner, I uh, don't have an accuracy banner for dwarves, unfortunately, so I've gone defense. Got lucky with two defense rolls on it as well, so it's ideal for him. Um, yeah, so if we take a look at the total stats, <clears throat> um, just over 36,000 on the HP. Attack, we don't worry about. Uh, look at the defense uh, stat, guys. Over 4,200 on the defense. You definitely want to be aiming for as much defense on this guy as you possibly can. 
Um, speed as high as I can make it at the minute, 163. I've gone for the 100% crit rate and as much crit damage as I can get for the damage when he does counter attack. Um, and obviously getting the accuracy as high as I possibly can. Um, if I was to drop on a, uh, an accuracy banner for dwarves, I'd probably switch that in for, uh, for this guy. It would drop his defense a bit, but uh, it's going to ensure that he, uh, he lands that provoke. Um, it requires some play testing, really, to make sure that's the right way to go. Anyway, so yeah, big, big old tank. Now, if we look at the reviews... Um, obviously that's what I'd expect, 4.6 and 4.5 in the arena. He is built for arena. Uh, the, the ones I have contention with actually are Dragon's Lair, the 3.8, and uh, Spider's Den, 3.3. Now I understand why these uh, 163 people have rated him as a 3.8 in Dragons, and it is because he is actually negative affinity for Dragon 20. But what I want to show you actually is that this guy is great as a negative affinity. Because um, what you want to do with this guy in Dragon 20 is you actually want the waves to be targeting him. He throws the Provoke out, so they're going to target him then with the A1. Uh, when the Provoke's not on, they're targeting this guy as the negative affinity anyway. Um, and if you take a look at the team that I use in Dragon 20, I've got Apothecary throwing spot heals on him. I've got Painkeeper throwing the AoE uh, heals out as well. That the guy basically doesn't drop. Um, kind of 90% of the time he doesn't drop before the end of Wave 2. Um, once you get to the Dragon, he's, uh, he's kind of done his job at that point. Um, he does get some damage in with the Warmaster proc, but he's mainly in there to deal with the waves, which is generally the biggest problem with the dragon anyway. So let's take him into the dragon, and I'll, uh, I'll show you him in action, actually. So here we go then, into dragon's lair. We're going to go for stage 20, of course. And as I say, yeah, he is a negative affinity, um, but that's actually perfect for us. Because um, what you'll see is that all the hits are going to go into Rock Breaker. Uh, and, and basically, it's going to stay away from these four here. Um, we've obviously got Apothecary in, who's great in, D in dungeons anyway. He's going to raise the defense of, of uh, Rock Breaker and everybody else by a further 21%. He's got the Spot Heals, of course. We've got Painkeeper for the AoE heals. Also comes with the uh, decreasing of the cooldown as well, which helps uh, Rock Breaker throw his Provoke out more often. Um, Ghostborn, uh, probably my second favourite character in uh, Raid actually, uh, with a decreased defence and increased attack combo, and uh, Frozen Banshee in there basically once we get to the dragon to throw out that poison sensitivity, and as much poison as we can get on the dragon to do it pretty quick. Now this isn't a quick run, it's going to come in probably between four and a half and five minutes, but bear with it, watch what happens, mainly with Rock Breaker. Uh, watch how his damage increases as time goes on uh, through the first wave as his defense stacks up with the A1. Uh, watch how he keeps his provoke out on a consistent basis. And even when the provoke is not out, watch how the waves actually target him as the negative affinity anyway. So here we go. Let's go straight into it. As quick as it loads up, you'll see what's going to happen. So bear with it. Watch it carefully. Um, I really do want uh, Rock Breaker to get more credit than he gets at the minute. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what happens. There's Rock Breaker with the Provoke on all five. So obviously all five are going to throw uh, AA1s at Rock Breaker. Um, Apothecary obviously has the three uh, opponents at random. But if you do watch, watch how often Rock Breaker gets hit throughout these first two waves. Uh, and watch how it, the, the damage is being pulled completely away from the other four. There's Painkeeper with the AoE heal, just keep uh, Rock Breaker topped up. Uh, the only danger I've got here with this team is if, uh, <clears throat> if Ghostborn does take a, a significant hit from the Apothecaries um, and his HP does drop below uh, Rock Breakers, then they tend to target him instead. Um, so hopefully Apothecary can keep uh, Ghostborn uh, away from that position. But look, everything's going into Rock Breaker. He's hitting back. His damage is increasing as we go. There was a 9, then a nearly 15. Uh, a 13, so he's probably peaked at this point now. He's not in there for damage, though, guys. He's basically in there to pull the damage away from everybody else. There's the Provoke again on all three. Um, he did put some fairly meaty hits in. Kind of 15 with a War Master proc of about 8 there. And 9.5 there. First wave is almost done, but as you can see, 
Uh, the other four are all at completely full HP. Uh, and ironically, so is Rockbreaker, pretty much. Um, that uh, passive that he's got is really great as well. Um, reducing the damage by 50%, 50% of the time. So there's the first wave gone. Uh, second wave obviously is a bit tougher, but let's see how he gets on. Um, I have play tested this, of course. It is my main team on Dragon 20 now. Um, I, I'm not quite at the point where I'm trying to actually speed it up. Just trying to get through with a 100% success rate. But yeah, take a look. I mean, everybody else, everybody's at full health. Um, and that's the way I'm expecting it to be all the way to the dragon. So the focus here is on Rock Breaker. So once we get past this wave, if you keep watching, um, I'm actually going to stop the video at that point. Uh, I won't make you watch the dragon as well, but it does go down with Frozen Banshee. Um, but yeah, I mean, take a look at this guy. Um, don't sit on him. Uh, he's an incredible champion. You do have to fully book him out though. Uh, get the masteries on him, make sure you get the defense as high as possible. Uh, and this is what you get as a result. Um, he does a similar job in the other uh, dungeons. Uh, he's a great spider tank. Um, I noticed the review there went 3.3. I think it was the lowest one for him. But again, use him as a negative affinity spider tank. Uh, when you require him in there and he'll do exactly the same job provoking all the spiderlings um, Yeah, I mean I, I I can't speak highly enough of rock breaker actually um, Here we go second wave's almost over um, Once this goes down, I will uh, cut the video and say goodbye to you guys So as I say, please remember to subscribe. Um, I love doing this uh, my channel is slowly growing now. I'm at almost 200 subscribers. I'd love to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark before the new year. Um, but I can only do that with your support. If you like this type of content, um, you like my shard pulls, which I'm hoping to do one in the two times uh, tomorrow, then, uh, like I say, hit the notification bell as well as a subscribe. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Um, I wasn't really watching it. I don't know how often anybody else actually got hit. Um, maybe you can watch it carefully and put that down in the comments for me. How often did uh, the other four get hit by the waves? Anyway, guys, Mr. Missing in Action, peace out. I'll see you tomorrow with a, a, a summon event two times.